That gets to the issue that Howard wanted me to talk about, which was trust. How do you do this? So here are the seven principles. Now, trust isn't something that just because you work for Bechtel or any other Marine Corps, whatever it is, it becomes automatically. You earn it. And there's a, there's a price of admission to what you do. And so when you come into an organization, um, you're not automatically, or you should not be automatically accepted as one of the team. You have to work your way into the process. And so just because you come from another organization, someone has a great reputation, you need to seriously look and say, okay, does this person fit the team that we're building? Um, which means there are boundaries around what you do. And, and so you don't say to somebody who comes from a different world, and the same thing happened to me when I, when I joined Bechtel, as Howard said, people said, what in the hell are we doing with this guy? And so um, I went to Kazakhstan for 18 months. The boundaries that I was given were very simple. Go fix the problem. Which said to me, that's license to steal. In Jack Sheehan's world, you never know how much authority you have until you exceed it. So I went there. <clears throat> and my process is very simple. Set goals. Set boundaries. OK? You're the, you're the site, site supervisor. What are we doing tomorrow? We're pouring 12 meters of concrete. OK, what time are we starting? Six. Six o'clock, get my Jeep, drive out to site. I thought we were pouring concrete at six. Uh, the concrete truck was late. The, you know, the dog ate my homework, couldn't find, the, couldn't find the plans. OK, end of the day, what happened? We poured four meters of concrete. What happened? Dog ate my homework, the concrete truck was broke. Yuck, 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 yuck. OK, what are we doing tomorrow? We're pouring 12 meters of concrete. Now, you immediately know that they can't do 12 yesterday. They aren't going to do 12 tomorrow, whatever it is. So you get out there next morning, 6 o'clock, 6.20, the truck's not there yet. At the end of the day, they don't pour the concrete. So you say, site manager, hey, come here. Two days in a row, you have major targets. I didn't make these up. You told me you were going to do it. I can't trust you. Get on the bus. Go back to the UK. You can't fire me. I just did. Get out of here. Turn the job over to the deputy. And invariably, in every organization, there's somebody who's beneath that person who's a non-performer who wants to do the right thing. Give that person a chance. The other things you do are very simple. I mean, we had this discussion yesterday about what happens to a director that comes on the floor of a plant. I come from the school that says, if you're the senior guy, you are always seen. So my rule was, after I got done working out at 4.30 or 5 o'clock, I'd go to the mess hall. I'd eat with the workers. I knew how many calories they were taking. I knew what they needed, because at that particular time of the year, it was minus 10 and 10 geez. I ate the same food that they did, and talked to one or two of them, but I was always seen. 2 o'clock in the morning, I'd go to the clinic because there's supposed to be a doctor on duty. Doctor wasn't there, I'd wake everybody up. Say, hey, where's the doctor? Well, he's asleep. What's he supposed to, what are we paying him to do? He's supposed to be in the clinic. Get his ass into the clinic. And oh, by the way, you're a supervisor, I want you to sit with him for a week. So there are consequences for not doing what you want to do. Now, I'm not talking about being a full-time jerk. Obviously, what you have to do is we're provide reinforcement to people who are doing well, but conversely, consequences for people who are not performing. Not performing, not because uh, of any other reason, because it's affecting the people who are doing the work. You can't ask a Turk or a Russian to come to work in a place that's unsafe. You can't ask anybody to go to work at minus 10 without enough calories in this system to keep from becoming hypothermic. And what happens is, if you don't do these kinds of things, the managers who are supposed to do that, you give them a chance to say, look, this is your work crew. Why aren't you there? And if they give you an excuse, 
that you know is bullshit, you say, get on the bus. I don't need you. I can find a Russian who is both cheaper and more interested in his own people than you. Trust, trust is tough. One of the things that organizations do, that I've seen, um, civilian organizations, private organizations, they don't know how to fire people because they allow the HR department to drive the process. Now I understand there are all sorts of rules that you've got to go through, but if you don't make people who are first line supervisors do an evaluation in a person to tell them really how well or poorly they're performing. Now this is assuming that what you have done at the top in terms of direction, competence, mission, yuck, 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 it's translated all the way down. And the same thing in the SMEAC business, what's the mission, who's doing what, so people know what they're supposed to do. I mean, you can't blame people who aren't told what they're supposed to do if they don't do it. But if, they have, if that condition exists, then you have an obligation to say to them, okay, at the end of the month, I want you to write an evaluation that says this person is incompetent or is in the wrong job or needs to go to school, whatever it is. I'm not all for executing. I mean, I, I believe in executions periodically, but as a rule, you ought to periodically also go through the process of training people, retraining people. Because there's a lot of good people out there who are given the opportunity of pointing out their shortcomings, they will rise to the occasion. And so anyway, that's tough. So if you go through the Bechtel system and you read the evaluations, 93% of the evaluations in Bechtel all say this is an A player. Bechtel does not have 93% of the people who are A players. And so if you want to get rid of somebody, you say they're a B minus player, which makes them still entitled to a bonus, and so what you do is you pawn them off to another business line. You are doing yourselves a disservice. More important than that, the people who are on the floor, whether it's the engineering floor or a construction site, know what you're doing. And so their reaction is, why should I work on discretionary performance when this jerk over here who does nothing still gets a bonus at the end of the month or at the end of the year? So it's incumbent on, on a team building process, especially in the trust side, that you deal with people on a face-to-face -face basis, positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. And this is hard to do. A lot of people don't know how to do it. Trust needs, trust needs touch. Most of the people that I deal with in my current, well, I don't know what the hell I do now, but I mean, but it's, um, you go into an organization, they say, hey, could you look? And, and so the common coin of the realm is an email. I send Howard an email and say, Howard, you pissed me off. And I capitalize P-I-S. <laughs> Howard's supposed to understand that. Now, he says, eh, okay, I'll get to it. But let me tell you something. If I walk down to Howard's office and say, hey, Howard, come here. What are you doing? You know you weren't supposed to do this, but you did it anyway. That type of direct communications is far more effective. Now, one of the things that I would highly recommend you as leaders do, not man manage you, go do what the hell you want to do. But I mean, you've, you're a process person, so I, you don't fit in my speech today. But if you're, a, if you're a leader and you don't allocate time to walk the floor, to talk to people, to listen to people, and talking to people is a learned skill. There are some disciplines just can't do it. They don't have, they, don't, they weren't, they didn't grow up that way. IT people have a tendency to not do this well. They communicate with each other through email, as opposed to going out. This is, the, you know, what's, what's really interesting, Steve Jobs, if you read his autobiography, you know, he never went out and sent people emails. He always walked down to talk to somebody, yell at him. I mean, he was a negative leader, but he did it in person, to his credit. And so my point is that if you don't walk the floor every single day, if you don't get on a plane and visit the site, talk to the people, A, you don't know what's going on. 
then people don't connect what you're trying to do because you always have the opportunity to educate, inform, and lead. And that's especially in today's world. So my rules were quite simple. I theoretically only worked four hours a day. And I controlled my own schedule. I had two secretaries, one that operated in London, one that operated in Houston. Both of them were forced to talk to each other every single day, different time zones. I only had, I only had meetings four hours, or I would do things for four hours. The, other, the rest of the day was my time to either think about things, read stuff, or go visit. And it was always every single day about an hour and a half spent visiting people. People get accustomed to seeing you. People can become to expect to see you. And what happens is the staff also then stops coming in and bothering you with trivial stuff. You know, you go to, go to a staff meeting, everybody has to talk. Why? Because that's their two minutes of FaceTime. My rule was meeting starts at 9, gets over at 9.30. If you get nothing to say, don't say it. I'm not going to hold that against you. I don't care. I'm assuming that you're doing your job. I only want to hear something that's going on that affects the organization. I'm paying you to run the construction department. I'm paying you to run the IT department. I don't care if the server is out. I mean, I care from one sense, but I won't come in and tell me it's out and I'm fixed it. So your time has to be spent in doing things that you think are of value. And the value creation and the mission have to be tied together. You can't be running around working in the parking lot when it's irrelevant to what the company is paid to getting, paying you to do. Trust requires leaders, not managers. You build trust one person at a time. You build trust by taking a small group of people with a shared experience. Usually it's in a project world. Build on that, create that, let that organization add more people to the group. But when somebody transgresses that trust, you have to be hard in what happens. Either that you say you're going to retraining or you're getting on the bus. That's what leadership is about. 